Hey guys, my name is Mike and this is my introduction to stop motion animation. So today guys we're going to be working with clay, in particularly plasticine. Now plasticine is one of the most popular clays for making stop motion animation. It's very flexible, it's easy to manipulate and it comes in a wide range of colours that are easy to mix together so you can form whatever colour you want. Although it has to be said guys, mixing clay can be very time consuming but it's also very necessary because when you first open plasticine and take it out of its packet you'll find that it's actually really firm. So you have to kind of work it up first and make it soft before you can use it. So today I'm going to be showing you a cool technique for turning your two-dimensional drawing of text into a three-dimensional clay-based object that you can then use in your animation however you like. And we're going to do this by tracing the image onto a piece of clay. Following on from that then guys, we're going to make a quick little animation using our new 3D text. And text is always an important factor for making animation guys. Whether you're making a title for your short story or you're just having some fun animating text like we'll be doing today. So let's get straight into it guys and we'll start by going through a few different things that you may need for this tutorial. So for this tutorial guys we're going to be using plasticine. So plasticine is great for model making. It's very flexible and easy to use once it's softened. And you can also buy these multicolor packs which are really good for starting out. The only other clay I use then is called polymer clay. It's a little thicker than plasticine, which makes it really good for capturing details on your model. So I tend to use this on the more important parts of a character, like the character's head. Now, polymer clay is a little more expensive than plasticine. A block of each cost around the same, but you can see the size difference here. That's why I would definitely recommend using plasticine if you're starting out. We'll also be using a little bit of aluminium wire. And you'll also need some safety glasses when using wire. A rolling pin for rolling out the clay. And a paintbrush as well guys but we're actually going to be using the handle of the brush as a sculpting tool. I'll also be using my palette knife to cut the clay. You don't actually need a sharp object to cut through the clay, just something with a straight edge. So the first thing you want to do guys is wipe your surface clean. So I use this plastic disc for pretty much all my model making and I definitely recommend you find something like this as it's easy to clean and you don't have clays mixing with other colours. So before we can do anything with this clay, the first thing we need to do is soften it all up. But rather than trying to soften a big huge lump of clay, I just broke it down into five more manageable pieces and I'm going to soften each piece. Once the piece is soft enough, then I just mix it with the other piece. And I'll just continue that until I've mixed all the pieces. So this might feel like a bit of work at the start, but it's really important that we soften the clay or we won't be able to do anything with it. Then we're going to press the clay until it forms this shape here, which is kind of like a burger shape. Then we're going to get our rolling pin and starting in the middle of the shape, we're going to roll from the middle, rolling outwards. A good tip is always roll away from where you're standing and pick up the piece of clay after every roll so it doesn't stick to the surface. And you can always pick it up and look at the sides and see which parts need to be rolled out. And just keep rolling out the clay until it's even the whole way around. And you can see here how I'm rolling away from where I'm standing. Okay, so that's the kind of thickness that we're looking for. So we're just gonna leave that there in the center. Now here's a drawing I did of the word animation. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna trace this drawing onto the clay. 
So we're going to put some blue tack on the back in each corner. And when we stick this down, we're going to make sure that the letters are covering the clay so we have something to trace onto. So we're not going to be able to fit the whole word, so we'll have to come back and get the rest. So in order to be able to trace this, you're going to need a blunt pencil. And by blunt I mean not a sharp pencil. A sharp pencil will only go through the paper. However, if you have a pencil that you think is too sharp, you can just get a piece of paper and just keep drawing these circles until the pencil becomes more blunt. Just like here. So we can see here when I pull back the paper that the clay is going to cover the A-N-I-M. So starting with the A, we're going to carefully start tracing the letters. And you can see now why it's so important that we use a blunt pencil and not a sharp pencil. Because a sharp pencil would just go straight through that paper. And now we'll do the same thing with the N. You may feel a little blindsided when you're doing this guys, but you can always rub your finger over the parts that you've already traced to make sure you didn't miss anything. And now when I pull back the paper, we can see that we've traced the A-N-I-N. The next thing then guys is to cut these letters out. And to do that, I'll be using my palette knife. So rather than just cutting straight into this, the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut each letter out individually and isolate each letter. This will give you a much better finish in the end and will make cutting out these letters so much easier. So just cut around the letter for now. Don't cut on the letter just yet. So we'll start with the letter I and we're just going to come straight down on that line that we can see from the trace. The trick here really is just keeping that palette knife straight and making sure that you put it in the correct position before you push it down. And you can see I keep my index finger on the blade to help me get that in the right position but also to add extra pressure when I'm pushing down. And be sure to turn the letter into whatever position is most comfortable for you cutting. That's one of the big advantages of cutting out these letters individually. So we're just going to continue this process through the rest of the letters. So now we're going to use the second half of that slab that we rolled to trace the rest of the letters. And we can see here that that covers the A-T-I-O-N, which will complete the word animation. So just like before guys, we're going to trace over all the remaining letters. Next we're going to isolate each letter and we're going to cut them out just like before. Now with the letter O because it's a roundy shape just keep going around and cutting all the corners off until it forms a circular shape. So a tiny little piece off each corner every time until you're happy with the shape. Then we can tap it with the palette knife and make the edges more rounded. Then with the center of the O, I usually make a cross and just try and cut all around and take as much out of it as I can. And don't worry if it looks a little bit rough like this one, 
because we can just smooth all that out using the handle of the paintbrush. And then very last, using the paintbrush like a rolling pin, I'm just gonna gently roll over the top of the leather and that'll just make the whole thing look a little bit more smooth. So now we'll just continue cutting the remaining letters. And when we're finished cutting, we can just put them all together and see how it looks. So this is how it looks compared to the original drawing guys. It's not 100% but it's pretty close. The important thing is that it's now a 3D object. So we're going to do one more demonstration guys. First thing we need to do is wipe down the surface. And you can see all the red that the wipe had picked up from the previous demonstration. And be sure to wipe down whatever tools you used also. This time guys we're going to be using this image here which I printed out on my computer. This text is a little different to the last one because this text has layers to it. So you can see one layer there and a middle white layer and then a last blue layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace each layer but instead of white we're going to use red just like the letters we have on top of the screen. So we'll start by softening up this blue clay here. Then we're going to roll it out just like before. Then using some blue tack, we're gonna stick the image down over the clay. At this point, we're focused on the O and the T. So we can see here more clearly the three different layers I'm gonna trace. But for this middle white one here, I'm gonna be using the color red. But we're gonna start by tracing this most outer layer first. and we'll do the same for the letter O. Just tracing that outer layer first. Next, we're gonna cut the letters using the same techniques that we used before. And be sure to keep rotating the letter as well, guys, so it's easier for you to cut. Then just give it a few taps around the side with the palette knife to get rid of any of them corners. And finally, very gently roll over it once or twice with the paintbrush. So next we're going to get that small blue layer on top before we do the red. So this way we'll be finished with the color blue and we'll only have to wipe down the surface once. So that's them two layers done. So now we just have to do that middle layer. So I rolled out some red, and I'm just making sure that it covers the area that I'm gonna wanna trace. So now we can place those layers on top of each other and see how it looks. The center of the O is so small, it's actually easier just to roll out a small piece of clay and place it on top. And that's basically it guys. 
So you're probably wondering, what's the point in actually doing all this? Well, now you've just turned a 2D drawing into a three-dimensional object that we can use for making animation. But before we do that guys, be sure that you wrap up whatever clay that you have left over so you can use that again for future projects. And you can wrap that clay using cling film. So I had this idea about making a pump and inflating the text during the animation. So the first thing we're going to do is make the pump. So I got this piece of aluminium wire and I'm going to cover it with this blue clay. This will be the pump part. I also made the handle of the pump using wire and I'm going to cover that with black clay. For the hose of the pump, I'm just going to roll out this long piece of black clay. Then I'm going to push that onto the wire at the top and just keep working along. And just keep covering the wire with the clay as you do so. Next, we're going to roll out another piece of clay, just like we did with the hose. But this time, we're going to also gently roll over that with the rolling pin to create a flat looking piece. We're then going to use that to add some details to the pump. So we're just going to place these bands at the top and the bottom, just to make it look a bit more interesting. And that's pretty much it guys, now we're ready to start our animation. So the setup is a little different this time guys. I'm actually using my mobile and I have it looking straight down onto the set. And I'm using this lazy arm to hold it in place. So this is another really cool way to make stop motion animation. You just have to make sure that your device is secure. So we'll start by moving all the letters very slightly and then taking a picture. And we're going to do this about three times. And afterwards when we're finished, we can copy and paste those three frames and create a jiggle effect in the word animation. So in order for this to work best, we have to actually create this animation in reverse. So what we're actually doing is deflating the text. But afterwards, when we play the video in reverse, it's going to look like it's inflating. So we see here, in between each picture, I'm going to come in and flatten down the letters from right to left. Then I'm going to put my hand back in position on the pump and then I'm going to take the picture. So I'm going to continue that now guys, the whole way across until the entire word is deflated. And you can see here how I use some blue tack to keep the pump in place during the animation. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so you can see we still have to reverse the animation, which is something we did back in episode one. So we go back to the first frame, tap on it and hit select. Then we're gonna scroll all the way to the end and it's gonna select all the frames as we do so. Then we're gonna tap on that last frame and hit reverse. And now that the animation has been reversed, it looks like I'm inflating the text. So the last thing I'm going to do guys is I'm going to save my video in Stop Motion Studio and then I'm going to bring it into InShot and just add some sounds. I just put some music in the background and I'm also going to use some sound effects when I'm putting the pump into the text and taking it back out again. Luckily for me I have a pretty good shush so I decided to make the sound effects for the pump myself. <laughs> Then I'm going to place that sound effect on all the different parts where I push the pump down. And that's pretty much it guys. So that's going to be it for this episode guys and I hope that this technique proves useful to you. Uh, I remember when I first started making model text it would take me a really long time and the size of the text would never be exactly how I want it. 
So hopefully this technique will make your projects a lot easier. And as always guys, you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. I'm just showing you the technique. So you can use whatever text you want and you can use whatever word you want. Maybe you want to make a, an animation with your own name, maybe the name of your school, your favorite sports team, or maybe just your favorite word. And the same goes for the animation too, guys. Once you have your text made, it's really up to you how you animate it. So maybe you'll do the backwards technique like we've done today and destroy your text in some way. Or maybe you'll make an animation, your text might survive. Or maybe all your text will come together and just form something completely out of this world. It's entirely up to you guys. On the next episode guys, I'm going to be showing you a couple of other materials that I use for making stop motion animation. And I'm also going to show you how to build your very own stop motion puppet. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, stay safe.